Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Friends in Christ, it is with great joy that we gather to worship and celebrate on the solemnity of the most sacred heart of Jesus. History tells us that the first unmistakable devotions to the sacred heart appeared in the 11th and 12th centuries. It is impossible to know how or where this devotion began, what prayers were used, or what people or religious groups helped to spark initial interest in consecration to the most sacred heart of Jesus. But what we lack in information of those early years, we have made up for with a treasury of novenas, devotions, prayers, hymns, poetry, and consecrations. In its early days, the devotion was reserved for mystics and consecrated persons. In the 16th century, the devotion made a leap from the realm of mysticism into what tradition calls Christian asceticism or common Christian practice. Even so, the devotion with its many prayers and exercises was still reserved for individual private prayer. It wasn't until 1670 that the first Feast of the Sacred Heart was celebrated. On June 11, 1899, Pope Leo XIII consecrated all of mankind to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. This great act would firmly establish devotion to the Sacred Heart as an essential part of the Christian life, and it is because of that great act we celebrate the solemnity in June. Today's gospel gives a beautifully simple reflection on the reality of God's presence in our lives, a personable and relatable presence that invites us to truly live and interact with our Heavenly Father. The readings also give a glimpse into the sacred heart of Jesus and his desire for us to have a living relationship with him. But how, dear friends, how do we have a relationship with God, the creator of all and savior of the world? I recently met with a friend who, in a moment of remarkable honesty and vulnerability, asked me a similar question. How do you get close to God? Jesus gives us a clue in today's gospel reading when he said, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. If you've ever been in love, you know that alongside other very powerful feelings, there comes an overwhelming desire to know the person you're in love with. We are set on a grand chase after their heart. We seek to know them and to understand their way of thinking, their history, their likes, their dislikes, their goals and dreams. True love creates in us a desire to really know 
and understand the fullness of the people we care for. Does this ring true in our relationship with God? Are we content knowing God as we do, or does our love for him continually propel us forward in our study of scripture and theology, our prayer lives, and our daily pursuit of holiness? Jesus gave praise to God for revealing the mysteries of heaven to those who were little. Jesus did not mean just children, of course, but those who are humble of heart, those to whom the beatitude belongs, blessed are the meek. But here is where our relationship with God differs from our relationship with people. Though we might be madly in love with another person, we do not always know that they will trust us and reveal themselves to us. Even long-standing relationships are rocked when long-held secrets emerge. But God holds nothing back. Friends, he is altogether good. And he desires to reveal all of his goodness to us. In God, we find a treasury of grace and knowledge and wisdom so great that we could never comprehend its immensity or value, not in this lifetime or 100 lifetimes. The very best news for today is that this treasury is made open to us. It is open to us as we partake in the Eucharist. It is open to us in the scriptures. It is open to us in our community of faith. It is open to us because we love God and being in love with him we will not be disappointed if we actively seek to know him in a deeper and more intimate way. This lifelong journey of seeking and coming to know God is at the center of today's solemnity. The more we come to know God, the more we realize the depth of his love, a love that pours forth from the sacred heart of Jesus. Divine mercy urges us to say, Jesus, I trust in you. The solemnity of the sacred heart calls us to say, Jesus, I love you, and I will seek your loving and most sacred heart all of my days.